Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second, the Kaldheim Commander's Edition. Before starting, we want to tell you that if you're looking to spice up your decks, you should support Ventrocraft and his handmade custom foil altars. Check out the link below, they're gorgeous. Also, in celebration for having 8,000 subscribers, we have a giveaway up and ready for when February comes. More on this at the end of the video. This week, Cicada is on a Tergrid Stax build inspired by Elder Drunken Highlander's build, Wiz is on Eerie Rules Clockside Outlaw Magda, David is on DJ Yavimaya's Stasis Yorn, and Lal's playing his own Storm Orvar. David is the one kicking us off this week. His hand is pretty solid, lacking a bit of blue if not for the fixing from Carpet of Flowers. He has Ancient Tomb and Bayou for lands, with Wild Growth also helping him ramp up. Brainstorm might need to be resolved during a main phase because of the lack of an island. Thassa's Oracle is, as you know, half of a combo, with Veil vale of Summer ready to protect David if he gets there. Baal gets a hand that can't yet abuse Orvar, but is pretty good at casting his commander fast and, should he reach the right cards, push him forward. He has two islands and a Nykthos, with Grim Monolith and Chrome Mox for ramp, the latter of which very likely pitching the less useful Thieving Skydiver. Trinket Mage is really easy to abuse with Orvar and an excellent all-rounder tutor. Scarra's hand is kinda slow. He mulliganed once and kept two Snow Swamps and a Scorch Ruins, half a combo piece with Rings of Brightheart. He has a small play for each turn, starting with Vistura Seer into Lightning Greaves and then Liliana, Heretical Healer. From there, he can choose to Cabal Ritual into Turgrid and flip his Planeswalker to start trying to discard value from the rest of the table's hands. Finally, Luigi Mulligan down a 6, but he managed to keep a good hand thanks to just how strong Dockside Extortionist is in Magda. Snow Mountain and Berry Ruin are his lands. Jessica's Will is an incredible all-rounder red card, especially with low CMC commanders. Last Chance can give Luigi the turn he needs to win, and Mirror of the Forebears is a neat way to abuse Magda. He sent Thunderclap to the bottom of his library. Ready for the new commanders? David starts us off with a Bayou, which he enchants with a Wild Growth. The threat of a turn 2 Yorn is impending, but with no way to abuse him yet. Baal gets his turn and drops an island. He proceeds to cast a Chrome Mox, choosing to imprint Trinket Mage onto it. Not yet done, Baal casts a Grim Monolith. His board is looking pretty threatening. Cicada goes for the humble approach with a Snow Swamp into Viscera Seer before passing. Luigi goes even simpler, with Bloodstained Mire into Snow Mountain before anyone finds an opposition agent to annoy him. He also passes. Back to David, he drops an Ancient Tomb and then casts one of the commanders that made the EDH and CDH communities horny this January, Yorn, while floating one green. He uses that mana to cast Carpet of Flowers, pretty much ready to abuse Baal's status as the Mono Blue player. On his turn, Baal looks at his mana base and decides to play Nykthos to at least slow David down a tiny bit. He goes ahead and casts his commander, Orvar, before passing. Cicada keeps it slow, dropping another Snow Swamp and then casting Lightning Greaves. He equips it to Viscerous here before passing, hoping that threatening 1-1 stops any attacks coming his way. Luis also takes the slow approach by dropping a second Snow Mountain and casting the Dwarf Lady Magda. David starts his turn with a tapped Rhymewood Falls. This won't remain an issue for long, as he then attacks Cicada, triggering Yorn and untapping both his commander and the snow duel. Cicada takes the damage and David moves to end step with a bunch of untapped mana. Bald uses this moment to cast a regular into the royal on his own grim monolith, creating a copy from his commander. More mana. Bald gets to his turn, top decking a card that will definitely change the way he was going to play it out. He casts Grim Monolith and then casts a Dramatic Reversal, which resolves, and all but announces a wheel. He decides to use a hole for mana to cast a Thieving Skydiver, since he wants to do both dump his hand and dodge Playcrafter effects. When that Merfolk enters the battlefield, it gains control of Cicada's Lightning Greaves, which he equips unto Orvar. Baal tops that off with an island, now having no cards in hand except for his last spell, an Echo of Eons. 
He casts that and David responds with a nature claim, targeting the original green monolith. David also casts Veil of Summer to draw a card but finds no answers, so we all mulligan our hands. With not much mana or things to do post-wheel, Balk just casts a Soul Ring and passes. Cicada starts his turn by asking David whether he has interaction for the Skydiver as he drew an innocent blood. David's vague about it, so Cicada instead drops another Snow Swamp and casts a Woe Strider for that sack outlet redundancy. Luis starts by complaining that he was ready to try and win pretty soon before that wheel. And so he misses a land drop as he casts a Paradise Mantle and a Liberated Dwarf. He equips the mantle onto Magda, passing. David adds two blue from his carpet. He drops his Calling Tarn and gets a Snow Island. He then unapologetically casts Stasis, threatening to drag the table down with him. Bal responds by activating Nykthos for double blue and casts Delay on it. David responds with Veil of Summer, which he managed to find once more. Fortunately, Bal bears the burden of wheeling the table by being able to respond with a Force of Will, exiling Tribute Mage and targeting the Veil rather than the Stasis to prevent David from getting to draw one. This means that the Stasis is on a three turn clock. After this little trade, David casts Findorn Elves and lets the turn end here. Baal starts his own with an Omen of the Sea, increasing his devotion and drawing the top card as is. He then plays an island and casts Whim of Volrath on his Soul Ring, triggering his commander and choosing not to use the text changing ability nor the buyback. He then uses the new Soul Ring to activate Nykthos and generate 3 blue, casting into the royal on the Vid's carpet. With his rush to dump cards, we can see where things are going. Bal casts Time Twister, making Luis complain a bit about this line of play. But really, Bal had Echo of Eons in his grave, so there was not much else to expect. After that wheel, Bal does not find any gas to continue, so he moves to end step and Cicada sacrifices the goat to scry one to the bottom. After this second wheel, Cicada is the one who's ready to try and get some stuff done. He plays Gaia Reach Sanitarion and follows that with a Jewel Lotus and a Mana Crypt. He uses the Lotus to cast Turgrid, which resolves, pretty much announcing lack of interaction from the table. Cicada moves to dropping a Play Crafter to steal Luisa's Dwarf, David's Findorn Elves and the Thieving Skydiver with Turgrid's Trigger. Cicada's not done, as he casts Reanimate on the Play Crafter for another round, this time to kill everyone else's commanders. Luis responds by adding red with Magda's mantle, getting a treasure in the process. The Playcrafter resolves, but the commanders don't get stolen, because as soon as the trigger resolves, they are in the command zone due to the SVA recently added to the rules. Fairly satisfied, Cicada swings with Wolf Strider at the vid, just in case he's on Naus, and passes. We starts his own turn with an Inventor's Fair and then casts Dogside Extortionist for a whopping 8 treasures. He was still ready to win after the wheel and the playcrafting actually disrupted the plan by a fair amount. He is missing 1 mana to combo off with Cloudstone Curio, so instead he casts Magda, followed by Goblin Welder. At this point David goes ahead and casts a Mystical Tutor for a Cyclonic Rift which isn't a bad card to have when you're 3 upkeeps away from a stasis. On his upkeep, David removes one time counter from stasis. He then draws and moves to his main phase, dropping a Marsh Flats. David takes this opportunity to show us that Cockatrice Shuffler is suspicious as he recasts Carpet of Flowers. David keeps at it as he drops a Mana Crypt followed by a Root Maze. He goes to his second main phase, adding blue with the carpet and overloads the Cyclonic Rift before Ball untaps in order to avoid counter magic. This also has the potential of slowing all of us down due to Root Maze. Cicada uses Wall Strider to sacrifice each other creature he stole, scrying the top cards to the bottom one by one, and returning the creatures to their owner's graveyards. Luis responds by activating Magda, cracking his treasures to get a Spine of Ishsa. The Spine destroys the maze. Luis does this despite the risk of enabling Baal's next turn, as the maze slows Luis too much. Besides, Baal's post-wheel turns have been pretty unimpressive, plus he lost a Basalt Monolith token and Chromox still demands he pitches a card to it. 
When Sukeda gets back his priority, he sacrifices Wolf Strider to the Seer, scrying to the bottom once again. He's also fairly sure the escape will come in handy later on. After the board is clear, David sacks the flats for a snow swamp and passes. It's Bal's turn and he's ready for some storming as he casts Soul Ring, followed by Chrome Mox exiling Trickery Charm. He then plays a Mikokoro in case David is on Thoracal and passes. Cicada also wants to artifact storm a bit. He knows that there's a dog side coming from Luigi, but he's also 100% sure Bal has interaction and decided to lean on just that. He drops a Mana Crypt, followed by Grim Monolith, Lightning Reeves, and then a good old Smokestack, challenging Bal's interaction. It resolves, making Turgrid live to her title as God of Fear. Cicada finishes his turn recasting Viscerous here. He intends to equip the Greaves, but Paul tries to convince him not to do it. The social stack opens for some cryptic but vague advice, and Sukira decides to trust Baal on it, passing without equipping anything. Luis starts his turn by cracking a vista for a snow mountain before Turgrid hits the board. He then casts Dockside. Alas, Baal responds with a mystic reflection, revealing his plans to the table as he makes it so that Dockside enters as a copy of Viscerous Seer. This prevents Luigi from winning through Curio, which accomplishes the mission. Luigi recasts Paradise Mantle and finishes his turn with Magda, not fully happy with how his turn went. On his end step, David goes for another tutor, this time the Vampiric one. He uses it to search for a Null Rod, making the table as inefficient as possible until that stasis hits. David's script spares him 3 life, after which he casts Yorn, with the help of Carpet. He plays a Bloodstained Mire and goes Hellbent after casting Null Rod, which is fairly good news to the rest of us, despite the delay on the table. David passes and Bal casts Omen of the Sea on his end step, changing his plans as he draws and casts a Chain of Vapor on Null Rod. David decides not to copy since there is nothing on the board he's afraid of, and Bal goes to his turn. After two cycles of giving 21 cards to the table, Bal is starting to feel like he is not able to control us, so he chooses to risk it all. He plays a Misty Rain Forest, cracking it for a Mystic Sanctuary, and getting Chain of Vapor back to the top. He casts Seagate Restoration, drawing 5 and going to a total of 9. He relies on David not top-decking Counter Magic for his Chain of Vapor and casts Clock Spinning, removing the last counter on Stasis, which gets cast immediately, threatening to time walk Luigi and Cicada. Bal passes, hoping his gambit pays off. On his upkeep, Cicada orders the smokestack triggers to sacrifice first and add a counter later, planning to trim down the table's resources. He then equips the seer with the boots before passing. Luigi sacrifices a mountain to smokestack, replacing it with another one. He equips the mantle on Magda and adds red with her, creating a treasure and casting Goblin Welder, which is a really solid card in his board state. On his end step, David cracks Bloodstained Mire for a nice tunnel. The Crypt is feeling the return of Null Rod and decides to punish David for it. He also pays the Stasis Tithe since his deck is built around it and ends that Crypt's entire career by sacrificing it to the Smokestack's trigger. David top decks and casts a Ponder with his Carpet Mana, while attempting to pressure Bal's decisions, but not by much. David draws and then casts a Demonic Tutor, which we all know is intended to get him protection from Chain of Vapor. Looking at his mana, we discuss a bit amongst ourselves before Luis decides to end all discussions by sacrificing a mountain and thunder-clapping Yorn's frozen face, while eating away at David's options for his tutor. If he chooses to commit to counter magic, he will not be able to secure stasis. With the tutor still on the stack, Bal casts Chain of Vapor on his own Chrome Mox, sacrificing an island to copy and aim it at the poor stasis. This way, David is forced into a corner in terms of color mana for his next upkeep. And thus, David chooses the recovery option in Rhystic Study instead. He wraps his turn up with Null Rod back to the battlefield, choosing not to drop Rhystic Study because he is not keen on risking discarding Stasis should Cicada bring Playcrafter back to play. He passes dissatisfied. On his upkeep, Bal sacrifices the Omen to Smokestack. 
He then casts a good old Baral and plays Scalding Tarn before passing. Back to Skira's turn, he sacrifices Grim Monolith to Smokestack, choosing not to add a counter to it yet due to the lack of solid options to sustain it. He drops another Snow Swamp and then casts Playcrafter. His main plan was to take out Dockside while attacking David's hand, which has Stasis and some other mystery card. Luigi does indeed sacrifice Dockside while David discards his tutor card, Ristic Study, preferring to keep Stasis just in case he finds counter magic. Baal is forced to let go of Baral. Sakita then casts Dance of the Dead on Luis's dark side. He knows Luis is not a fan of No Rod, so he either gets Sustain for Smokestack or he gets free mana if Luis deals with the Rod. Both options are great in terms of grind. Sakita gets 5 treasures missing the Wild Growth since it's hidden by a thick bayou. Luis sacrifices his treasure to the Smokestack, choosing to cast Faithless Looting while Turgrid is away and discarding Spine and a Tangle Wire, both accessible through his Welder. He then adds Red with Magda, popping a treasure, as dwarves do, and drops a Snow Mountain. Luis moves on to casting Karn the Great Creator. He upticks him, taking out one of Sekiro's treasures before passing. On David's upkeep, he sacrifices a Snow Swamp to Smokestack, not even breaking a sweat, and then recasts Snow Daddy Yorm with the help of Carpet. David proceeds to add an extra layer of no artifacts allowed as he casts Collector Oof, moving to end step. Baal cracks his fetch for an island. Baal's upkeep consists of him sacrificing Sol Ring to the smokestack since he does not see it doing anything anytime soon. He casts Chromox as smokestack fodder, not imprinting anything, before dropping another island to the battlefield. He passes with enough mana for Rift, and the table is weary. On Sekiro's upkeep, he wins the Crypt Roll but still sends it to the Slammer with Smokestack. He then adds a second counter to the stack's artifact to pressure Luis's board. He chooses not to untap Dockside, instead sacrificing him to scry one to the bottom. Terrible draws all around. To really force Luis to use the Spine, rather than just swap Crypt with Smokestack with Welder, Sekiro casts Woe Strider with his cape making it large enough that it can pressure Karn and getting a little goat for his troubles. Cicada then attacks the Planeswalker with Viscerous here before moving to Endstep. Luis uses Welder to swap his treasure for Spina Vish Saw, taking care of Smokestack as it was mostly hurting him. On his turn, Brandon drops a Blast Zone while considering his options for a bit. He ends up deciding to pass, upticking Karn to remove another treasure from Cicada and choosing to take it slow. David's turn begins with a good old casting of Stasis with the help of Carpet. He then sends Yorna Ball passing. On his end step, however, Ball casts a kicked into the Royal on that Stasis. For a card named after the idea of keeping things still, David's Stasis has spent this entire match moving from zone to zone. Ball uses his turn to drop a Thespian stage, which indicates some weird combo ideas from his deck. He passes, not wanting to pitch his commander to another potential Innocent Blood effect. Sekiro's turn starts with a trustworthy Jet Medallion, before he goes ahead and attacks Karn with Woe Rider, as Luis can now threaten to lock the table with Lattice. Luis, however, had long since abandoned that plan, letting Karn take it. On his second main, Sekiro casts Cabal Ritual and follows it with Turgrid. Luis responds by sacrificing the Spine to get a Tangle Wire back to the board, triggering Spine back to his hand. Spine is trying to compete with Stasis as far as moving around is concerned. After this, Sekiro casts an Elvish Doomsayer to maybe steal up some permanent from each other player's hands due to Turgrid. Bao responds with a buyback capsize on Turgrid, which possibly means his hand is shock full of precious permanents that will wreak havoc if Sekiro steals them with Turgrid. Cicada moves to end step and Luis puts a counter on Blast Zone while adding a treasure with Magda. He is ready to consider destroying those anti-artifact permanents even if it costs him his commander. Luis uses his upkeep to order Tangle Wire's triggers, removing a counter first and then tapping permanents he doesn't care to see untapped anyway. He also gets his very first one life from Inventor's Fair. Luis transforms Tangle Wire into a tapped creature, not wanting to lose Father to Dockside even if Cicada will be able to sacrifice his treasures once the Blast Zone goes off. 
on the beat's upkeep, he taps 3 to Tangle Wire, not bother at all as he can untap them with Yorn. He does just that as he once again sends Snow Zaddy at Bal. On his second main, David tries to resolve a static orb to keep us nice and slowed, especially when considering Luis has a tangle wire. This is a pretty risky play, to which Bal responds with a force of will, pitching Twiddle. David is forced to pass, he only has stasis in his hand, and not only does Blast Zone handle it, but it also establishes Luis as he steadily gains the advantage in terms of board value. Tanglewire triggers once again, now in Bal's upkeep, and he taps 3 before dropping an island to really make it clear he is flooded. Bal passes with mana open for capsize and possibly not much else. Sakiri taps 3 to Tanglewire not particularly bothered. He drops another Snow Swamp and then recasts Sturgrid, since it makes little sense for Bal to bounce his Helvish Doomsayer when Luis has pretty much indicated he intends to dockside from his graveyard next turn. Luis responds to Turgrid's cast by tapping Magda, generating another treasure. He proceeds to sacrifice Blast Zone as he does not want Cicada to control his board by stealing that land with Turgrid, since that land could eventually stop him from winning. Cicada responds by sacrificing the Doomsayer to scry one to the bottom, and all of his opponents discard one. The most important discard is Spinovich Saw, which can be recurred once again. David manages to hold on to his single stasis in hand. Sikeda then attacks Karn with Woe Strider, taking the Planeswalker out. He wraps the turn with an easy to read card called Chains of Mephistopheles. Luis uses his upkeep to do the Tangle Wire once more, removing a counter and tapping two permanents. He also gains another life from the fair. Luis then uses his Welder to exchange Tangle Wire for Spine. Turgrid triggers, and Sicaria thinks for a bit, counting the artifacts in play for Dockside. He does miscount, choosing to steal the Tangle Wire. Spine hits the field, targeting Turgrid. Sicaria responds by activating Guy Rich Sanitarium. He is Hellbent, so the chains just make him mill. Everyone else, though, has to discard, draw, then discard as a result, all with Turgrid still around. Luis does not discard any relevant permanents. The other permanents discarded are David Stasis and Dark Confident, while Ball intentionally throws in a Gilded Drake to help the table deal with Luigi at instant speed. Cicada does not take Stasis since it would wreck everyone but Luigi, choosing to keep Dark Confident and trade Gilded Drake with Luigi's Welder. Turgrid goes to the command zone. Luigi then casts Gamble for Underworld Breach, aiming for the win yet again despite not having a lot of cards in his hand. Gambles his cards and it hits Clownstone Curio. Lucky. Luis goes ahead and casts Underworld Breach, following it up with Dockside Extortionist for 5 treasures. He drops a Barbarian Ring and sacrifices it to kill the Welder. Sikeri responds by killing the Welder on his own terms, sacrificing him to scry to the top. Luis then escapes the Curio, which resolves, and escapes the Goblin Welder. Since Luis does not have enough mana to go off, Bal keeps Capsize steady in his hand as the mono red player passes. On David's turn, he taps 4 to Tangle Wire. Since Bal is stacked for commander damage already, David adds to that, attacking him yet again with Yorm. In his end step, Bal casts Capsize with Buyback on the Tangle Wire as it interferes a bit with his board. Bal top decks a high tide. He fires it to cast Narset, hoping to hit a wheel regardless of Sakira's chains. He doesn't, so he takes and casts a Sapphire Medallion instead, holding mana for another emergency capsize. He passes. On his upkeep, Sakira reveals a Snow Swamp to Dark Confidant. He then sacrifices his goat to scry to the bottom, not happy with his draws at all. He drops another Snow Swamp and then he attacks Narset, killing her as he wants to be able to fully trigger Gaia Reach Sanitarium. He then messes up which creature he wants to sacrifice, killing his poor Vicious Seer to scry the top to the bottom to look for Thoughtseize effect as a way to prevent Luis from winning next turn. He fails, so the table starts discussing their options as Sekira can find a way to make Luis lose a combo piece permanently by himself. However, David does hint that he has a Force of Negation in hand, so that the bouncing of the Curio could be enough for them to deal with it once and for all. 
With this clue, Cicada casts his Liliana Heretical Healer and chooses to pass. Luis once more gains one from Inventor Sphere and then casts Dockside Extortionist, to which Bal responds with Capsize with Buyback on the Cloudstone Curio. Knowing the Curio wouldn't resolve and having Welder as backup, Luis sacrifices it with the Welder while getting back Mox Diamond. He pitches Scalding Tarn to it. Capsize loses the target and fizzles, heading straight to Bal's graveyard. Luis gets another 5 treasures, adding to the one he had. He passes. The video is now asking us to end him as he top decks a Morphic Pool and attacks Baal before passing. Baal also has very few options, drawing one and passing as well. Zucada reveals a Dark Ritual to Confidant. He casts it and then casts Turgrid with still floating mana. He uses this mana to cast the top deck Thought Seize on Luis to try and attack his options. Luis responds by casting Fork on Thought Seize to go at the Viz hand to take the Force of Nature. Baal then responds with his last top deck, a Flusterstorm, on the original Thoughtseize, since Luis could actually pay for his if he wanted to, although at the expense of treasures and tutor ability from Magda. The Thoughtseizing stops there. Sukere is then forced to, unfortunately, sacrifice Bob to scry the top card to the bottom and flip Liliana. She gets minus X for a Playcrafter, dying in the process but creating a nice scenario. Luis now has to choose which card he wants to give Cicada as he either sacrifices one of his combo pieces or Gilded Drake, which goes to Cicada and allows him to be the one deciding what card he'd take from Luis, the Welder. Also valuing the Welder more, Luis lets go of Dockside. Cicada gets a bunch of treasures. He sends Wolfstrider at the vid because Luis just has too many hit points for him to meaningfully pressure his board. Luis equips the mantle onto Drake and casts Magda, with 5 treasures left for an activation. He passes to David, ready to try and win again next turn. David top decks an Oko Thief of Crowns, which could be just what the table needed. However, David surprises everyone as he helps the God of Fear, making her live up to her name. Cicada is forced to respond by activating Gaia Reach. Since him and Bal are hellbent, they simply mill a card while David and Luis discard, draw, and discard. Luis does pitch Tanglewire, triggering Turgrid. In response to that trigger, he activates the Welder, sacrificing the Spine to return Tanglewire to his board. This triggers Turgrid again, but since triggers are dealt with in Apnap order, Turgrid's trigger goes on the stack first, and then the Spine's trigger to return itself goes over it, resolving first. Spine goes back to hand and Turgrid's shaking her to be elk face in disappointment. David recasts Yorn before passing, eyeing Ball's board for more attacks. Ball taps 4 to the wire, draws, and plays an island. He casts Orvar before passing, notably tapping Mikokoro over Thespian stage. Cicada taps 4 treasures to the wire and attacks Oko with Turgrid and the Strider, for he no longer knows what Oko might do if they have another turn cycle. On his second main, he sacrifices Turgrid to scry to the bottom, and then recasts her and activates Gyre to try and cut Luis's options down. He gets a Robber of the Rich, but otherwise has nothing else he can do to meaningfully affect the mono red player. On Luis's turn, he taps 3 to the wire, including Magda, popping another treasure. He drops an Universal Automaton, which is a dwarf, among other things. Luis then activates Magda, sacrificing 5 treasures to get a Clock of Omens to the field and spell Doom on the table. Luis equips the Automaton with the Mantle and is now able to generate infinite tap treasures. All he has to do is tap the Automaton and an untapped treasure for the Clock, choosing to untap the Automaton. Since this little changeling is a dwarf, Magda throws in a treasure every time it gets tapped. The new treasure is used like the previous one, and Luis gets infinite tapped treasures. From there, Luis uses Magda to get himself a defense grid just in case, followed by a soul guide lantern and a grinding station. Now he can sacrifice tapped treasures while looping for new ones with the automaton once again. This lets him mill out the rest of the table, while the lantern allows him to keep graveyard shenanigans in check. Because he's a strong, independent man, once we have no library, Luis uses Magda to fetch for a memory jar, activates it, and we all die as we attempt to draw. Good game.
Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Luis's resource management and access to combos in the command zone ended up grinding us out of the match. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Eagle Eagle, Drunken Housecat, Uncrustable, Cosmic Astro, V, RJ, and Starfall, our stack breakers. Since we have reached 8,000 subscribers, we will be randomly giving away 3 Commander Legends boosters to one of our patrons. In order to participate, just make sure to be one of our patrons until February starts. These boosters were graciously sponsored by our LGS Arena Port. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.